In the comments to a recent video, there was a discussion about reviews and measurements. And I'm talking, in, in this case, really more professional reviews rather than, you know, amateur reviews, if you will. Um, because, you know, many or most amateurs are not going to have the, uh, the equipment required to measure. Um, now, this also ties back to an interview I did with the founder of Soundstage, the online audio video publication that's been around many years, um, the founder, Doug Schneider. I interviewed him in a video last year, um, asking him about why they go to such lengths. I think maybe I could almost argue more lengths than any other professional audio publication uh, with measurements and it costs them a lot of time and a lot of money and why do they do it when many others don't and and is it important so one of the comments that I had was reading a review without measurements is totally pointless and should be thrown out a hundred percent now <clears throat> I won't agree a hundred percent to that and take you know take that kind of an extreme side but I'd like to just offer my personal opinion on why measurements to a certain extent are important. Now, subjective reviews, those where, you know, a product, and it doesn't have to be loudspeakers, it could be any audio or any video product, is given to a reviewer and they, they stick it into their reference system and they listen to it and they write a so-called subjective review. Subjective because it's their opinion. And one thing that we have to keep in mind is that's all it is. I don't care if you've been a professional reviewer for 40 or 50 years. What you're offering is your opinion. You are not speaking fact. The fact is only in the context of your system, your listening preferences, your musical choices, and your own set of ears. And we have to keep that in mind. That's very, very important. Many, many reviewers and publications over the years, particularly the high-end audiophile publications, these people have almost become, almost become gods. In some countries, they're revered so heavily that people will blind buy equipment with, you know, an A plus or a five star or whatever the accolade recommended component or whatever, uh, you know, reference component status they'll just they'll just go out and blind buy that component because xyz reviewer said that this was the best preamp or loudspeaker or whatever that they had ever heard now i mean that that sounds to me that sounds completely ridiculous but there are people that i mean this is how they construct their systems they, they pick the top components in each category put together a system and and maybe think that they've arrived at audio nirvana now, I'm not saying it's impossible to do that, that they're going to end up with a bad sounding system, but the likelihood is it's not going to be fantastic. And the reason why is we have to think about multiple things when putting an audio system together. And this again is where the uh, reviewer's opinion comes in. So that component is being inserted into a reviewer's usually called their reference system. And they may have multiple reference systems for like different price ranges or, or whatever. But still, at the end of the day, they're plugging this unknown new component into a system that they've been living with. Okay? So A, they're used to the sound of that system. All right? And whether we'll admit it or not, that immediately, that long-term exposure is going to form a bias. Your your ear brain system is now become used to that sound. And if you insert anything that is significantly different than that sound, it's going to stand out initially, at least uh, like a sore thumb. It's going to be different. Okay. Now, what happens if the reviewer only has that component for a month or two and, and only is able to listen to it for, you know, a day here, a day there? Are they ever going to build up that I got used to it and my, my ear brain system has got used to it? Probably not. So the reviewer may be focusing more on what's different between the sound of that component than what they're used to. 
And that benefits nobody unless you have the same room, if we're talking loudspeakers and something dependent on the room acoustics, and exactly the same component setup. And that's, again, highly unlikely. So um, that's a roundabout discussion about the subjective side of it. Now, subjective opinions are important. You know, if, if, uh, if you have five or six or 10 or 20 different professional reviews and the, you know, the subjective opinion seems to trend towards this being a fantastic sounding, performing and operating component, and they've all got vastly different systems, which is usually the case, then that's probably something to say that, hey, you know what, I should give that component a listen if I'm in the market for that, that particular type of, uh, uh, type of product, because you know, there's now becoming some sort of consensus going on. But still, it's your ears and the context of your system that's most important. So where do we come in with the measurements here? Well, measurements sort of level the playing field, if you will. They take out of context all of that. I've inserted something into a system I'm used to, and I'm just hearing differences. Now I can actually put things on a level playing field and compare them to other like products that the magazine has reviewed or the publication has reviewed. And what do I mean by that? Well, you know, if we have a let's say a phono preamp and there, the, the reviewer mentions that it's much noisier, there's more hiss or background noise um, than their reference phono preamp. Well, does that necessarily mean that that product they're reviewing has a bad noise floor? Not necessarily. What you need to do is look at measurements of the noise floor and compare it. Maybe the, the system, um, the component in the reviewer's reference system is extremely low noise, so much so that it's not, you know, way better than average in that respect. So that's then nothing necessarily to say that the component, the phono stage they're reviewing is bad, you know, just that it's maybe not exceptional in that case. Another reason that it's important is measurements, particularly of electronic equipment, like, you know, preamplifiers, amplifiers, can point to compatibility issues or things that you need to watch out for. You know, for instance, if, you know, a, a power amplifier has a very, very low input impedance, um, certainly some preamplifiers or processors may not anymore have a flat linear frequency response driving that low input impedance into the power amplifier. And the measurements on both sides will tell you that. You know, if the preamplifier is measured into, you know, very low uh, loads and performs well, then maybe we don't have to worry about the input impedance of the amplifier. But let's say many tube preamplifiers are not happy driving a low input impedance amplifier and you'll get ripples in the frequency response or you'll get an early roll off at high frequencies at low frequencies. And you certainly don't want that. You want the system to be linear. Also, we've got you know, loudspeakers, loudspeakers and power amplifiers. And this is another major thing. You know, is the amplifier capable if you measure it at full power at eight ohms, four ohms and two ohms, and the amplifier shuts down when you try measuring it at two ohms? Well, there's a declaration. Don't use this amplifier if your loudspeaker load is lower than four ohms. So this is where this data is very, very crucial and important. And, and you know, it will actually help. I use that sort of data for figuring out, you know, if a component is going to actually match and work with the rest of my, my system. Now you may say, well, okay, but the manufacturer publishes all this information. You'll see sometimes multi-page specification sheets, particularly for a complicated, you know, component like an AVR or a, uh, audio video processor or a preamp that's got digital and analog inputs and outs and, and things like that. Well, really, I, I'm sorry to say, but what, what's to say that those measurements that 
that manufacturer is providing are actually true. There have been many cases over the years where, you know, there are marketing specifications out there. You know, things that look good on paper to try and sell the product, but don't necessarily meet those specs. And I have to tell you, in many, many cases, and you, you just go back, uh, pick any publication that actually does some measurements, and go and look at, you know, 20 or 30 power amplifier reviews and see how many of them actually met their noise spec, their distortion spec, and their rated power. Now, in many cases, you know, a good electronics company actually underrates or underspecifies the power. So a 300 watt a channel amplifier will actually maybe give you 350 watts a channel, but that's not always the case. So all of these things to do with interaction and frankly, just as a double check to make sure that, you know, what the manufacturer is telling you is actually true is a very, very good thing. And one other thing that I'll point out, if you've got a magazine or publication that does perform measurements and they see something in the measurements that's uncharacteristic, let's say, um, let's say that there's a lift in the response measurement of a loudspeaker at high frequencies. If I see that and it's pointed out in the discussion of the measurements, and then I go and look at the subjective side where the reviewer has not measured this, the, the component or the loudspeaker, but sat down and listened to it, what exactly am I going to hear? Or what am I seeing uh, in that review that may point to that deficiency pointed out in the measurements? So if I all of a sudden see the reviewer talking about hey, you know, on many of my recordings, they sounded a little bright or a little bit spitty, and I had to do some things with placement, et cetera, et cetera, to get the speaker sounding more linear. Well, I can now make a direct correlation to those measurements and potentially say, well, that lift is maybe why the reviewer felt that these speakers were tipped up. Um, so again, that's, in my personal opinion, the case that measurements are important. They're important to level the playing field and put into context exactly what the subjective reviewer was hearing and why they were hearing it. And it's a good point to do a double check on the manufacturers to make sure that what they're telling you is true. So again, thank you for the discussion in the comments of our previous videos. Uh, it really gives me an interesting ideas to think about for upcoming video topics. So thanks again very much for watching.